or something? Yeah, so like to explain that, it's it's really deep. Um, but to how that all started, um, in the 1900s, um, El Salvador was ruled by like uh, hundreds of powerful families, you know, like aristocrats and stuff. Yeah. So they coined this term called the 14 Familias, 14 families. But in reality, the 14 families represented the 100 powerful families, you know, and they just abuse like slave labor and you know the campesinos and the working class and um over the span of seven years you know 70 years you know it results in a civil war but in in the 1930s i think 1920s um a guy named Mar uh, faribundo marti which is like uh, you know like a cesar chavez but in el salvador yeah he led an uprising against the uh the government that was in power and you know like 10,000 campesinos, farmers, they, they got slaughtered, you know. Oh, e seriously? God damn, that's a big-ass number. 10,000? Yeah, like, easily just, I mean, they had no chance, you know, against the government that had, like, you know, rifles and automatic weapons at the time. So Yeah, that, that's that's the reason why, like, the Second Amendment in the, in the United States is still very important. Because people don't assume that our government can, like, you just don't know. fight against us someday. But, you like, it, it's better to be armed than not to be armed. Yeah, so they got wiped out, and he became a martyr. Um, so, you know, 30 years later, just people got, just people got fed up, you know, it's, it's hard for us to imagine that because we live in the USA, California, yeah, definitely, man, we're so detached from that. Kind I don't of think stuff. we have a reason to like go to Washington DC and like bomb them or start a war, you know? So, um, where my parents' story comes into play as, uh, so like after my mother graduated from high school, she moved from the countryside to, uh, the capital San Salvador and she found a job there. I think she was like 19, 20 years old. So the year is 1979, um, but I guess, I mean, who knows if my parents knew at the time if a civil war was going to happen. Um, my mother was just working at a factory, you know, like a fabrica. Um, and then, you know, one day, uh, just these guerrilla fighters, they just stormed the, the factory and they just hold everyone hostage um, for three months. So, like, my mother Damn. and 100, uh, other 100 people were held hostage for three months. Um, but their strategy was to... to make that factory as a safe house, you know, okay. so yeah. they can wage guerrilla war against the, the national government of El Salvador. Um, so, yeah, my mother spent three months, like, packing ammunition for them, so, like, AK-47 clips for the for the guerrilleros, the guerrillas, and then packing grenades. And then what's messed up is, like, they didn't get, they weren't fed, you know, by the guerrillas. They, were, they had to go beg people in the countryside and the capital for food, like, just normal yeah. people, like, if... I were to go to people on the street in LA and asking for food from the cars, you know. So, I still don't know how my mother survived. Um, she's told me that, she's always told me that the guerrillas treated her well. They never harmed the people. They just they just harmed the the um, the owners of the factory, which were two Taiwanese entrepreneurs. And yeah, they like I don't know if they tortured them, but like they didn't give them toilet paper when they had to go to the bathroom and stuff. I think they made them starve and. I'm sure they have their own reasons. I'll have to, like, look into that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, eventually um, the government closed out on the factory and the guerrillas had to uh, burn down the factory. Yeah. And that's how my mother escaped, you know. Oh, um, shit. Yeah, so my mother always tells me, I mean, who knows? I like to, but she's always told me that, like, she was never raped, you know. She was always treated well. Yeah. Because the guerrilleros were the guerrilleros were just normal citizens, you know. They wanted to wage this guerrilla war against. Well, yeah, that's, they're basically a militia. Yeah, it's like the setas. I mean, we'll talk about Mexico in a bit, but same, same concept, you know. Um, but, yeah, that war lasted 12 years. You know, my mother only saw the first three, six months, I'm assuming, because she left as soon as the factory was burned down. She had a choice, you know, um, to stay in her hometown and, like, you know, live there for the rest of her life or just right. immigrate. So she immigrated to uh, Costa Rica, Costa Rica, and she lived there for a year. That story is still unknown to me. I just know that. She lived there for a year. After she lived there for a year, then she immigrated to the United States um, with the help of, you know, coyotes, these um, professional, like, smugglers and stuff.